Hi, today's problem is going to be about population genetics, and here is a problem. Consider a locus with 12 alleles, A1, A2, and so on, including A12. What is the frequency of the allele A1 if we know that the frequency of the homozygous state for this allele would be 0 0.10, and uh, that the frequency of all heterozygous genotypes uh, containing A1 is 0 0.4, uh, under the assumption of Hardy-Weinberg, what is uh, the expected frequency of the uh, homozygous uh, state uh, of the allele A1 uh, of uh, any heterozygote involving A1? So, two questions today. So, if you know how to apply Hardy-Weinberg formula, you may stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own. And when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And today's problem is unusual because usually such problems involve only two alleles, A and B, or capital A and small a. Uh, but today's problem uh, is about uh, uh, locus with 12 alleles. And... Uh, what we know, we know that uh, frequency of the homozygous recessive uh, genotype is 0 0.10. So now I can uh, show you um, uh, formula, Hardy-Weinberg formula, that stands for the frequency of the different genotypes. Uh, I would show you a formula for the two alleles, and because we are not going to expand it to 12 alleles, uh, we are going only to use uh, a small portion of this formula. So let me remind you of this formula. P squared plus 2 P Q plus Q squared equal to 1. And for the P squared we have homozygous uh, dominant genotype. For 2 P Q heterozygous genotype. And for the Q squared homozygous recessive genotype. And once again, this formula uh, applies when we have only two alleles, that is capital A and small a. And these two alleles may produce three variants, so they can combine and form uh, genotypes that is capital A, capital A, capital A, small a, and two small a's. And of course, uh, uh, those we have only two type of alleles here, so this is going to be one type, that is uh, capital A, uh, and another type that is small a. Uh, These two types of alleles would make, as you see, three genotypes. And now, of course, it would be easier for you to understand that all the alleles P plus all the alleles Q would equal to 1. So the same number as here. Because uh, here we have only, as you see, P squared stands for the allele A, dominant allele, and P stands for the uh, also allele A, and Q stands for the uh, recessive allele A, and Q squared stands for the two recessive allele A. So uh, we have only two types of alleles. So uh, that means that uh, all the alleles P, that is dominant allele A, plus all the alleles Q, that is recessive allele A, would equal to 1. We just uh, think about them separately uh, from the genotypes that they can form. And, uh, of course, when uh, we have a genotype frequency of the A1, A1, that is 0 0.10, we can use this information, so A1, A1 frequency would be 0 0.10, and this also means that the, the frequency would be 10%, because we can um, have problems with uh, two different scales. On one scale we can have uh, uh, numbers between 0 and 1, as you see in our problem, and uh, one would be maximum, and the other scale can be when we have all the numbers between 0 and 
and of course uh, 100% as you see would equal to 1. So we also can uh, say here that this is going to be 100%. So 1 equal to 100% or 0 0.5 would equal to 50% or 0 0.10 would equal to uh, 10%. So now we know that uh, frequency of the homozygous state of the allele A1 is 10%. We also told here that uh, this allele A1 uh, is present in heterozygous form in uh, this frequency of the 40%. And what does this information give us? As you see, uh, heterozygous state meaning that only one allele would be present. For example, instead of A, they are going to be A1, and the second allele can be any allele out of 12. So we can put the genotype as A1 and AX. And X stands here for the any number between 2 and 12. So, uh, we know that this particular uh, genotype frequency would be uh, 0 0.4 or 40%. How to convert numbers? It's very easy. We just have to uh, move decimal uh, point two places to the right and uh, we are going to get 40 and we are going to get 10 here. Or we just can uh, multiply this number by 100 in order to convert uh, into this system. So, uh, as you see, 10% uh, frequency here and 40% uh, frequency here. But as you see, only one A1 allele would be present here and only half of this uh, number would be frequency of the A1 allele. Another half would be any other allele between allele A2 and A12. So uh, now we can find the frequency of the A1 allele. We just have to add these two numbers. Uh, A1 allele present in homozygous form plus uh, A1 allele present in heterozygous form. And uh, we have to put one half here. So we have to divide this number. And uh, that means that uh, this is going to be uh, 0 0.10 plus one half multiplied by 0 0.40. And this is going to be frequency of the A1 allele in this gene pool. And as you see, this is going to be 0 0.3 or 0 0.30. So now we have a, a frequency of the A1 allele. And this is 0 0.3. And uh, now we can um, solve our problem and answer two questions. Under the assumption of Hardy-Weinberg, what is the expected frequency of the homozygous uh, form of the allele A1, A1, and uh, according to our problem, uh, the real number is 0 0.10, and uh, according to uh, formula here, we have just to multiply this number by itself in order to find the expected frequency, um, how these two alleles can combine. So this is going to be uh, two independent events uh, in order for A1 uh, to be in pair with another A1. So this is two independent events and that means that we have to multiply 0 0.30 by 0 0.30 or we can say that we can square this number so the answer would be 0 0.09 and as you see there is a small deviation from a uh, number that we were given in the problem. Uh, we had uh, this 
frequency here but according to the formula here this should be uh, in homozygous state equal to 0 0.09 so now we can find a frequency of the uh, expected frequency of the heterozygous genotype including this uh, allele A1 and uh, in order to find uh, in order to use this uh, part of the formula uh, we have to find um, P because we now know the frequency of the Q and according to this uh, formula here if we know Q we can easily find P just a reminder that uh, this frequency of the uh, allele in homozygous state uh, we can uh, put here 0 .0 and those uh, here in the formula you see small a small a but you can ignore uh, these uh, letters these letters can be changed to any letters for example a1 a1 or a1 a2 uh, or a b uh, everyone can use uh, whatever he likes and uh, according to this formula here if we know number Q and this is not the number Q this is would be number Q and this would be uh, number uh, Q squared as you see here so we can put Q squared equal and here we can put Q equal so uh, if we know Q that equals to uh, as you see 0 0.3 and this is 0 0.3 here we can easily find P so uh, this is very easy calculation you even don't have to have a calculator so uh, what should be this number that we at 0 0.3 and going to get 1 and uh, of course this is going to be 0 0.7 so when we add these numbers we are going to get 1 and now we can use this part of the formula to find the expected frequency of the heterozygous genotype and this is going to be 2 pq and here would be uh, for the Q would stand uh, um, A1 or of course we can uh, put uh, A small a here but uh, as I already told we can use any uh, letter and for the P in this formula uh, would be any uh, other allele so we can call a x any allele between a2 and a12 so uh, we know all the numbers so we just have to make simple calculation we have to multiply 2 by number p that is 0 0.7 and by number q that is 0 0.3 and the answer here would be 0 0.42 and this is going to be expected frequency of the heterozygous genotype as you see this is also small deviation from the frequency that we have here and what does it mean we have uh, as you see frequency of the homozygous genotype uh, expected frequency smaller but frequency of the heterozygous genotype expected frequency that is greater and that means that this uh, uh, this gene pool or this society uh, of the uh, it can be animals or this can be plants but this society uh, is not in hardy weinberg equilibrium and the frequencies would change from one generation to another generation and uh, probably the fitness of this homozygous 
genotype for the allele A1 would be uh, least in next generation and that means that uh, fitness of this genotype would be uh, least than uh, fitness of the heterozygous genotype because as you see a frequency of the heterozygous genotype would increase from 40% to 42% and that means that uh, any genotype that involves one allele A1 and another allele that is going to be any other allele would be more fit than um, the rest uh, genotypes including uh, this genotype that is um, uh, homozygous for the allele A1. And we also can list uh, the frequency of the expected expected frequency of the heterozygous genotype here that is 0 0.42 and this is going to be frequency of the A1 and we can change this to AX um, heterozygous genotype and also you may uh, wonder why we have uh, here P squared, Q squared and 2PQ here for the heterozygous genotype and here is a uh, uh, easy explanation. Imagine that we have two uh, parents that is going to be uh, heterozygous, so would have a P and Q genotype, and another parent also would be PQ genotype. And when we cross two such parents, for example, this can be male here and female here. Uh, this is what we are going to get. Uh, P, P genotype here or also we can say that this is P squared because when we multiply chances of these two alleles uh, to make a pair we have to multiply these chances and this is going to be P squared exactly what we have here and for example in this cell we would have P Q and P Q here and uh, here we were going to have Q, Q. And as you see, Q multiplied by Q would be Q squared. And this is this part of the formula. And we have two PQ genotypes here. That's why we use uh, uh, two multiplied by P and Q chances here. So this genotype would be present um, in twice quantity as uh, this and this uh, probability and frequency of these genotypes here. And of course we can use uh, frequencies here for the, uh, any of these uh, alleles. According to this problem, frequency of the Q would be 0 0.3, so we can put 0 0.3 here and 0 0.7 here and uh, thus we can find that uh, when we have to multiply these numbers we are going to get 0 0.09 here and uh, we are going to get 0 0.29 here 0 0.29 here and uh, 0 0.40 9 here. So uh, we can use a Punnett square in order to find frequency of the different genotypes. When we know frequency of each allele, uh, we can build a Punnett square and can find uh, not only uh, all the genotypes possible, but also we can find frequencies of those possible genotypes. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments and ask questions if you have any. See you in the next video. Goodbye.